Hello everyone. Would you believe me if I told you there is a plate and a pulley system right inside your hand? Now this is not a plate for you to have your meal or the pulley system for you to help you get some water from the well. But these are strong connective tissues in the hand. One of them stops the hand from bending more than it should while the other one keeps the tendon gliding smoothly so you could perform your day-to-day -day functional activities. So stick around and let us discuss these amazing structures and how we relate to our day-to-day -day functions. Welcome to Slides the Clinic and the final part of our hand ligament series where we'll be talking about the finger ligaments and the pulley system. In the previous episode, we've been able to cover ligaments from the wrist coming up to the knuckles and now we're diving into the last few bits in the hand. We'll be covering the MCP ligaments, the DIP ligaments and also the PIP ligaments. These ligaments look very minimal but they're very very functional and one I would always recommend us to pay very good attention to. Let's start at the knuckle otherwise known as the metacarpophalangeal joint or easily the MCP joint. This joint allows for flexion and extension ideally and a little bit of side to side movement and in order for this to happen well there is a need for collateral ligament to stabilize the side to side movement in the context of collateral ligament any word or any ligament called collateral ideally means it's located on either side of the joint let's think about the knee joint where we have the medial collateral ligament and the lateral collateral ligament. So similar conformation is happening now in the fingers where you have collateral ligament on the ulnar side. However, when naming the collateral ligaments in the hand, we always make reference to the radius and the ulnar. So where we have the medial and lateral collateral ligaments in the leg, we have the radial or ulnar collateral ligaments in the hand. Now, if we go a little bit further to talk more about the collateral ligament. So this is a view, a zoomed view of what happens at the collateral ligament. In many instances, when people are talking about collateral ligament, it's always believed to be just one single ligament. However, in the hand, the collateral ligament actually has three participating individual ligaments. The first one is called the proper collateral ligament. And as we can see in the image in front of us, this is the proper collateral ligament. And what this does is it's very, very supportive, especially when the ligament or when the joint is in flexion due to the position it aligns with. And the other one is the accessory collateral ligament. And this just gives a bit of support to the proper collateral ligament. This is very, very functional in extension. So if we think of the two collateral or the two types of ligaments, the proper collateral ligament helps in flexion while the accessory collateral ligament helps in extension. And we have a third one, which is called the phalangoglenoid ligament. And this works by stabilizing the lateral glides at the interphalangeal joint. In addition together, these three ligaments are called the collateral ligaments and they work in synergy to ensure steady movement of the IP, the MCP or the DIP joints. Remember the plates in your hand. Now let's talk about it. If you look at the diagram right in front of us, 
this is a side view of any of the fingers and we have the MCP more at the right side the PIP at the middle joint and the DIP at the left hand side of the screen now if you zoom in and look closely at the base of each of these joints you have a small blackish structure which is just around here now that which you see is called the volar plate so the question is what is the volar plate now generally we we'll say the volar plate is is a fibrocartilage structure that actually reinforces the palm side of each of those joints and its main function is to prevent hyperextension it's safe to say that the volar plate blocks the hand from going too much in extension and it also serves as an anchor point so we could see around here how all the ligament actually converges and comes around there so aside from it serving as a fibrocartilage that blocks hyperextension it also serves as an anchor point for the ligaments the accessory ligaments to attach into injuries to the volar plate can result in joint instability and in some cases it could be a trauma or in a repetitive instance and that's the volar plate for us in the last few slides we focused more on the MCP joint which is the metacarpophalangeal joint now let's have a little more in-depth on the interphalangeal joint these joints are the joints found in between the DIP and the PIP which is the distal interphalangeal joint and the proximal interphalangeal joint as shown in the previous slide but the good news about this is the same arrangement of the collateral ligament found at the MCP can also be found at the interphalangeal joint except at the DIP where you don't have all the three ligaments that constitute the collateral ligament remember the collateral ligament group consists of three participating ligaments one is the proper collateral ligament the second one is the accessory collateral ligament and the third one is the phalangoglenoid ligament and this is present at the MCP and the DIP but in the PIP which is the last small joint it only has the proper collateral ligament and the accessory collateral ligament which means it doesn't have a phalangoglenoid ligament in various research and while we try to understand what exactly is the reason why the DIP lacks the phalangoglenoid ligament there's been a whole lot of research work and the most prominent of them has been able to suggest that one of the main reasons why this DIP doesn't have the phalangoglenoid joint is because naturally it has the minimal range in extension of those three joints and apart from that um, nature naturally designed the joint with only things or only structures that they functionally need so for the DIP which is the smallest and the most distal joint in the hand there is no functional need to be protected in extension because it ideally has very small range and therefore the volar plate is enough to limit hyperextension and also to provide some lateral stability which is one of the main function of the phalangoglenoid point, um, joint yes now to the interesting pulley system so the diagram below gives us a very good descriptive um, image of the pulley system but how I want to explain this is think of the pulley system in the fingers like a set of loops or straps that holds the flexor tendon as you bend your finger so this is a side view of a finger and this little gray slight whitish band are the flexor tendons so the annular or the cruciate ligament think of them like seat belts 
that holds the tendons close to the bone. Now, the first one, which is called the annular ligaments, so these are like proper seat belts, and you see them how they are numbered from A1, A2, A3, A4, and A5. So those are the annular ligaments. We have them called A1 to A5 pulley system. And then the other one, which is the cruciate ligament, are X-shaped kind of bands that also supports the annular ligament to hold this tendon close to the bones. So it's safe to say we have five annular ligaments and three cruciate ligaments. The annular ligament wraps around like a seat belt and the cruciate ligament go in an X shape to keep them firm close to the bone. Now together, <coughs> these bands keep the tendon close to the bone and they stop them from popping out when you are bending or trying to make a fist. And this is where we have the pulley system. So if you look at the joints, at the MCP joint, you have the A1 pulley. And then at the PIP, you have the A3 pulley. And at the DIP, you have the A5 pulley. So think about it like an odd number. The MCP has the A1, PIP has the A3, and DIP has the A5. And then for the cruciate ligament, the first one is just a little bit proximal to the PIP. Okay, so um, in the next slide, we'll talk more about the clinical relevance of this pulley system. But what is what to note about this pulley system is they prevent bow stringing of the flexor tendon. So when you're trying to make a fist, when you're flexing your wrist or your fingers, if there is no pulley system to hold this tendon down, it could bow string. So these are very good image to explain how the normal pulley works and what happens in the bow stringing. So on your left side, we can see it very well here, the normal pulley system, and we see how the pulley system holds this flexor tendon close to the bone. Now, this doesn't only hold it to the bone, it also ensure that the force of pull on the tendon is very strong. But on the other one, where there is no tendon being held close to the bone, we see the concept of bow stringing right here, where it doesn't only affect the efficiency of the pulley system, it also weakens the grip, it also weakens the movement. And we can see here that the congruency of the DIP is slightly affected. And this is big in terms of problems. So for people who um, need their hands for very strong grip, for example, for climbers, for people who do very, very good functional activity, once this pulley system is damaged or ruptured, the first few things you notice aside pain will be weakened grip and then loss of proper control in making a fist. Before we wrap up, here are two quick clinical pearls to keep in mind when looking at the finger. The first one on the left hand side of the screen is a volar plate injury. And this normally happens when the finger goes into an IPI extension. So we could see here, this is a proper volar plate injury. It's only the volar plate which is damaged. Unlike the second one here, where in addition to the volar plate injury, there's also an evulsion where the strength of the pull actually chipped a small piece out of the middle phalanx. And then to the second one is where we have the trigger finger. And this actually arises from a failed mechanism at the A1 pulley system. Remember the pulley system we talked about some minutes ago. So this is what happens when there's a problem with the pulley system. And this is where the flexor tendon, which is meant to slide and glide freely, 
now gets too big and then it catches and causes some locking sensation in the hand. So always remember, whenever there is a problem in the hand, be it pain or reduction in movement, it doesn't always have to be the bone. It could be the volar plate, it could be the ligament, it could be the pulley system. And there you have it on the ligament of the hand. Now, thank you for watching Slides to Clinic today. Don't forget to like, subscribe for more simplified anatomy tutorials like this. In the next class, we'll go more into the muscles and some other soft tissue structures in the hand. Thank you very much for sticking around. Have a nice one.